Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you had a great week. Um, so far, everything we've talked about in the latest market talk with um, Ted and Vi has occurred. Uh, the dip uh, happened in equities and the dip happened also in uh, bonds. So um, very good. I hope you, you enjoyed. Uh, but today, today's video is not uh, to talk about that. Today's video is to talk about the latest release we've done on the website. And uh, after I introduce those um, features we have added, I want to uh, inquire to Vidotas about two specific points from this release. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over the, the release and then we're going to move to Vidotas to talk about uh, two specific points and how to use them in your process. So <clears throat> we have added a page called Home. In this one, you're going to find a summary from the day prior. It's to give you an idea of the performance of different asset classes uh, the past day. We have a bug on VIX, but it's going to be fixed uh, this weekend. Then you, you have the significant economic events. So the, the first part is about the day prior with the results and uh, the significant economic events for the day and uh, when to expect it and the estimate, etc. You know the drill. Uh, you still can access um, the significant economic event main page, which is in data, I believe, here. You just click here. It's a shortcut to get there. You've got also here the overview, but with a limited numbers of tickers, uh, basically the same, the same uh, uh, tickers that you have here. And if you want to, to go to the main overview page, the one we used to have actually as a landing page, you just click here or you just click here to get to the, to use it as a shortcut. Then we also added the recent changes in your portfolio for the uh, previous two days. Uh, this way you don't need to, to go to uh, another page, uh, which is pop, 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 pop. Uh, I think it's in dashboard with some changes. Uh, it's, it's the same. It's in your home page. So this way, in the morning, when you log in, you can scroll on the same page. You have all the data that we believe matter matter to, to you. And if you want to get to access to the recent changes page here, you just click here, and you're going to get there. So we added the shortcuts icon everywhere. You then have volatility for limited numbers of tickers again, the ones that we believe matters. If you want to get to the main page, you just click here or you just click here, same as before. The five-day return correlation, so basically the three main uh, ETFs, uh, then you have gold, bonds, quantity, and dollar, uh, same ID. <clears throat> you want to go to the correlation page, you click here or you can click on the shortcut icon. Gamma at open also focused on um, for tickers. If you want more tickers, you just click uh, on this icon or you go to uh, gamma here. And finally, the top five bullish uh, tickers in my portfolio or the top five uh, bearish tickers in my portfolio. Same, if you want to get to the main page, you just click here. We basically also reorganized all the, 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 the menu on the left side. Uh, to make it uh, more straightforward to use. Uh, in uh, crypto, we have added the possibility to create watch lists. So I didn't create any, but uh, I know it was a request. Also in scanner, we have added the possibility to uh, uh, filter by cap. If there is an upside cap, downside cap, no cap at all. And we have added implied volatility percentile, implied volatility rank. And actually, the video of today will be about that. So you can see that in portfolio, we have added IV rank and IV percentile here. And uh, the idea is how do you use those? Uh, by the way, if you don't want them, you can click here and just save data. It's going to disappear. Okay. But for the people who want, who want to know how to use and what's the idea behind adding uh, IV rank and IV percentile, I wanted to, to ask Vidotas about it. So I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to move to 
Ouais, le TAS. Ouais, le TAS, tu en mute. Hi everyone. Uh, sure, uh, excited to talk about that. So first of all, uh, I want to say that some things uh, that I will say are directly related to trading options, and of course, options are is a complex financial instrument. So nothing I say here is uh, can be considered as a trading advice. It's for educational purposes. I just had to say that because. In order for me to explain it well, uh, I, I want to touch on some things that uh, are re related to the actual uh, buying and selling options. So yeah, first I, I'll share my screen, desktop too. And uh, I will actually give uh, uh, examples that are uh, for both rank and percentile that are relevant. Uh, so from today and uh, of course uh, what's a better uh, stock to show than the good old uh, GameStop uh, so yeah Raphael you can see my screen here yeah, yeah, yeah perfect uh, perfect so uh, first uh, and I will talk about the formulas uh, how, how both of these are being calculated I will also uh, show what it means but uh, yeah uh, i will explain why for example uh, gamestop now shows iv percentile of 98 uh, the way i calculate but iv rank of uh, 61 only 61 uh, even though the current implied volatility is basically 240 percent and of course i will also explain what this 240 percent means uh, so yeah uh, i will uh, actually uh, she show you a very small Python script for those who can uh, uh, code. Uh, uh, I will be happy to share the script, uh, but uh, I use uh, for my personal uh, trading uh, stuff. I use Interactive Brokers API. You can use any API or any data uh, for, for 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 this. Uh, so, but uh, of course, you need implied volatility data. Uh, and uh, we provide that data on myfractalrange.com uh, also. Uh, so uh, what is implied volatility? First of all, what's the difference between historical volatility and implied volatility? Uh, historical volatility is the, very easy to understand. It's basically how the stock uh, moved in the period of time. So usually, you know, we talk about uh, one year or month month or, or, or so on. So, uh, and uh, you get a number and you annualize that number. Same goes with implied volatility, but implied volatility is derived from the options market and it's actually forward looking. Uh, so it's basically what market implies the future volatility to be. So, and uh, that's why uh, sometimes you see discrepancies and you see the differences between uh, historical and implied. Uh, a lot of people um, in the markets are talk talking about implied volatility uh, premium discount relative to historical volatility. Uh, we also have this data on myfractalrange.com, uh, but uh, the topic is uh, not about that. So finally, uh, we have added IV percentile and IV rank uh, to my fractal range dot com. And actually, these uh, metrics they both tell you the same information but differently. And of course, numbers can differ, but uh, they both, uh, in one way or another, tell you whether current implied volatility uh, can be considered high or low. Uh, so first of all, uh, what is the current implied volatility number? Uh, usually, uh, this number is uh, taken from the options chain, which is the closest to the 30 day uh, to expiration from the at the money options. So basically, uh, if a 30 day expiration is not available, usually you take uh, one expiration before that and one expiration after that, and you uh, calculate the time weighted average but uh, this part is not important your broker takes care of that i know that uh, whether it is tasty trade think or swim interactive brokers or or whatever any broker who has options uh, trading uh, platform will show you that number uh, 
uh, and what that number actually means. And so simple example that I showed you from GameStop is that current implied volatility is 240%, crazy number. Uh, so uh, to translate this number is basically market expects this stock to go up or down 240% uh, in a year. So of course it can't go down 240%. It can only go down 100% to zero, obviously. But uh, but it's a good example. It's a, this is insanely high, uh, but um, of, it was higher. That's why I will also show you the advantages and dis disadvantages of uh, using IV percentile versus IV rank and which one do I use and of course the main question from users is how to use it in actual trading so now when we know what the current implied volatility is um, I'll show you a simple uh, formulas of uh, how to calculate IV percentile and IV rank and uh, then we'll do so IV percentile is very easy first of all for, for both calculations we will use one calendar uh, sorry one year of data not so uh, you can use 252 days i use 260 days not that it matters your broker most likely will use 52 weeks uh, which is uh, weekly data so number can slightly di differ but that doesn't matter so uh, i will use a api as an example and uh, so for example we take a stock apple we ask uh, for 260 days of data and instead of open high low close so instead of price data we request option implied volatility and uh, then we have a time series of uh, implied volatility i can actually show you a chart of uh, what uh, happens if i ask for apple here we have uh, some chart of uh, one year of data and it's implied volatility and we can see that uh, in uh, December, it was very low. Last year in uh, October and uh, this year in April, it was kind of high. Uh, we see the ranges that the Apple implied volatility at some point was uh, 30. And at some point it was, let's say, 14, 15. Uh, so what we do with that data? So to calculate uh, implied volatility percent percentile, we uh, take each value and uh, we calculate the amount of days it's very important that it's it's amount of days uh, when uh, the implied volatility was lower than the current implied volatility that's all it is so for example uh, now with apple uh, our implied volatility percentile is 46. so it's uh, very easy to translate that basically uh, only 46% uh, percent of days uh, the implied uh, volatility was uh, lower than, than, than the current one. So basically that's what it is. Uh, IV rank on the other hand, it's a totally different story. Uh, it's uh, not taking the amount of days, it's taking the range. So what was the, during this year, what was the high of implied volatility? And during uh, this year, what was the low of implied volatility? So let's say, the, like I said, the high, highest was the level was 30. And the lowest level was, let's say, 15. And current implied volatility is uh, 20. So it will say that hey, IV rank is uh, 24. So basically, it's uh, on a... Uh, first still on a first quartile of a range so 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 not insanely low but low basically it's uh, 24 percent of the way in, inside the range uh, so in both cases uh, uh, number of 50 would mean that it's kind of in the middle but um, they mean different thing because rank 50 would say that it's in the middle of a range so if it was 30 and 15 so now it's 22 and a half would be rank of 50 uh, and the uh, percentile yeah i would say that also basically if, if, if it's a medium number because 50 percent of days uh, this volatility was lower and 50 percent of days this volatility was higher that's basically it uh, now what are what can be the uh, disadvantages of using one or another so that's where this GameStop example 
uh, will be very beneficial to us. As we can see, current implied volatility is 240 uh, percent. Implied volatility percentile is 98. So now to translate uh, this number into a human language is that during the last year, 98 percent of days, implied volatility of GME was lower than it is now. So obviously, implied volatility percentile 98 tells you that this volatility is high. Actually, very high, basically at uh, almost highest level in a year. But there is a uh, another interesting thing that IV rank is only 61. And uh, it can be an advantage and, and disadvantage because implied volatility can be high, uh, but, uh, but rank can be not high because uh, even though 98% of days IV was lower, but uh, at some point it was way higher. And we know from here that 52 week higher low in implied volatility is actually high, is 360%. And we can see it from implied volatility chart. If we see that we had this uh, spike in IV actually in May, yeah, and it was 300, uh, more than 300. So even though this 240% is very, very high, it was high, higher. So that's why IV rank tells you that, yeah, it's kind of high, but, uh, but not as high as it was before. So even though these two numbers tell you the same thing, uh, whether IV is low or, or, or high, uh, these uh, numbers are different and the usage can be different. Uh, now, there is, what is the right or wrong way to use this data? There is none. Personally, I use IV rank because I want to see uh, whether not only uh, whether this IV is um, uh, high or low time wise, but basically where it sits in the range because everything I do is one way or another related to risk profile. And uh, the way I visualize risk profiles is through ranges. We all know that because MFR ranges is a basically risk profile. So I do the same thing for implied volatility. For example, here, uh, it's not available on an MFR, but uh, I mean, I calculate ranges for implied volatility as well for myself to know uh, what can happen. So now uh, what to do with this information? First of all, uh, I use rank, but a lot of options traders use percent percentile. Uh, so it's not that one is better than the other. I just uh, show you one disadvantage of rank that some people find it as a disadvantage that, that it can show you uh, lower rank even though volatility is um, high. So, so I print out both. So that's what I will do on MFR also. I will look at both. I prefer rank, but if I see that percentile and rank is very, very different, because they will always be different. But if the difference is big, I will just check why. Maybe on, I will just check why just to know, ah, okay, we had this IV spike or IV crash, that's all. But you choose one or the other. So now uh, what to do? Uh, whether IV is high or low tells you uh, whether you want to focus on option buying uh, strategies or option selling strategies. So basically, whether you want to be long volatility or short volatility. Uh, option traders uh, know that uh, you can express the same view uh, with calls or puts. It means if you are, for example, bullish an asset, you can express bullish directional view but by buying calls or selling puts. And uh, when it comes to spreads, uh, options traders also know that uh, buying call debit spread and selling uh, put credit spread can be the same thing. Uh, so that's what to do. If you want to express a, a view with options, uh, if IV rank is low, uh, that's what I do. For example, IV rank is low, so lower than 30. Uh, for me, 30 is this uh, kind of a fresh goal. But again, there are no rules. And, uh, were, uh, when IV is low, you want to, to buy optionality. So 
So you want to use debit strategies. Uh, you want to buy options. So for example, if you are bullish, you want to buy calls or buy call spreads or um, use any other uh, option structure you prefer. Now, on the other hand, uh, if implied volatility is high, so above 30, I be ranked above 30 uh, or, or percentile, uh, whichever you choose, then you can start looking um, to selling options. So for example, selling put credit spreads or or, or uh, selling naked, naked puts, of course, don't do that, or, or, or even do non-directional strategies like iron condors or selling strangles and so on because the uh, uh, implied volatility is one of the actually not only implied volatility is one of the few assets that are actually mean reverting it means in the long term it's not trending and the works of um, Mandelbrot and Hearst uh, proved this um, to be the case um, decades and decades ago uh, if you take a long time so we're talking four years 10 years and more uh first exponent of volatility is uh, below 50. you will rarely see almost never see Hearst exponents uh, below 50 on equities but volatility it is it means that volatility tends to revert to the mean so what do you want to do if volatility is low you should be looking to be long wall and if volatility is high, you should be looking to sell more. And uh, of course, you, I will not talk about strategies and how to use, uh, how to sell spreads, how to collect premiums, how to use debit strategies. Uh, you need to study that on your own. But basically, that's it. Uh, for example, if I want to trade any options uh, strategies, for example, my favorite option selling strategy is selling iron condors on spike QQQs and other indices. I don't do that on individual names, but as an example. So I would not sell iron condor on spy if IV rank is lower than 30. The higher, the better. Uh, but actually, if it's insanely high, it's also not good. So, I mean, if I IV rank is 8, 85, 95 or, or whatever, then... Um, uh, you can also get crashed, but uh, because you will sell uh, iron condor or sell options, you will get a lot of premium. But uh, if uh, VIX is high, if volatility is very high, the moves can be higher than expected also. But anyway, uh, I would only sell those iron condors if IV rank is at least 30 plus. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, by then buying uh, spreads, for example, buying vertical spreads. So, so uh, also, uh, I would uh, be buying uh, vertical spreads only in, uh, if one of the two is true. First of all, if IV rank is quite low. Secondly, uh, if IV rank is high, but skew is uh, skew is um, basically volatility smile is. Um, in my favor so for 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 me to explain that because i thought that I mean, it will be a problem so so i'll show you what i talk about when i say implied volatility smile because i know that otherwise this video will just confuse people uh, so uh, when iv rank is high or low uh, if i want to buy spreads i also look at the thing which is uh, uh, called the uh, Time lapse skew, uh, which basically tell, shows the Im implied volatility of not at the money options, but basically of every strike. So, for example, uh, if uh, now GME is not a good example, I will go to SPY. And uh, yeah, let's say I want to play to play June monthly expiration. And we see that uh, this uh, is not um, the smile per se. We see that uh, uh, puts uh, have way more in demand. Uh, so, or you can even do, uh, I use interactive bro brokers uh, platform, but uh, you see that the angle on, on this thing is uh, uh, steeper on a put side. So, so basically, for example, will this smile would uh, benefit uh, buyers of uh, put debit spreads because if you buy a, a put which is uh, 
out of the money or only slightly uh, in the money and you sell um, way more out of the money put, uh, you will be selling higher implied volatility. So it means uh, it's beneficial for you to buy spreads. But again, it's not the topic of uh, today. I just wanted to show you that uh, uh, these numbers can tell you what strategies uh, you, wa you want to use to express your views. Yeah, so I, I hope it was useful. Yeah, thank you, Avai. <clears throat> it was uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, I will have to rewatch the video uh, to make sure because uh, I didn't know about that. Um, and uh, you've been talking about uh, how IV rank is much more useful than uh, uh, implied volatility uh, premium and discounts uh, for already a couple of months. I'd like, to, to, I'd like you to give me an example, for example, um, Let's take um, what MFR was saying. Uh, let me uh, share uh, share screen. Because the idea is to reinforce your decision making, right? This is the reason why we have added this. So let's say we were uh, five days ago when uh, we had that uh, crazy sell off. And you are thinking, okay, uh, trend is still bullish. So there is no break of trend in QQQ, uh, despite the, the crazy move down. We have uh, the lower range that is not that is not moving. It's uh, buckling. Uh, so you had, uh, I don't know if you remember that day, but you, you had uh, quite a lot of selling, but the, the law of the range was saying, uh, we are not going um, further. At some point it's gonna bounce. Uh, it was actually quite beautiful on the trading view script because you had uh, you had the price trying to go lower and suddenly you had the, the the snap back up. But let's say you need another confirmation and you wanted to look at IV rank and IV percentile. What would you have been looking for in terms of IV rank and IV percentile on that day, so that you added another layer on your decision making process? What data would you be looking for here in IV rank and IV percentile in QQQ, for example, on that yeah. particular day you had the setup? Okay, let me show your screen, my screen, uh, just to show something. But uh, this sensor will not be as excited as uh, you may think because uh, IV rank is being used for structuring traits uh, when uh, you already have the idea. Uh, I don't use uh, IV rank uh, as a something that, oh, IV rank is now this, so it means time to buy uh, or time to sell. So first what I saw, so this line is uh, uh, implied volatility of uh, QQQ. So a couple of days ago, uh, yeah, so uh, of course, what happened is uh, quite obvious uh, now, uh, Basically, we for 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 a couple of days we have this IV crash. Before that, we had spike in IV. But what this number would tell me is actually the same thing that I can see in the VIF of MFR ranges, or using VIX, BXN, or something like that, because it just tells me that uh, both historical and um, implied volatility is either high or low. What I mean, I. For volatility study, I always recommend people use this of MFR range. So, of course, if the range is wider or the range is narrow, narrower, uh, it means volatility is expanding volat or volatility is extracted. This number is, uh, so what I saw, yeah, of course, low end of the range, upside downside ratios are through the roof. Uh, we saw like a regular upside downside ratio of eight. In QQQ, I believe it was eight at least yeah, when I was... went to like fifty. I mean, it was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you use yeah. RT, it, was, it went to like fifty. Yeah. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I use uh, RT is the final uh, like a tool, but uh, I always first recommend people uh, to see what's going on with end of day. So write down those or mark on a chart those end of day values because. 
uh, a lot of users, they market opens, they use RT and they forget where end of day range was. End of day range is re relevant for the entire day. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, trend, trend was holding, uh, upside down set ratio was uh, amazing. Uh, correlations basically, uh, Again, my number one tool uh, was basically saying, look, bonds are going up and the stocks will go up soon. And soon it happened on the same day. I, I, it just basically, uh, so yeah, so, but what implies volatility tells me that, um, because of course I use options most for, for these things, because uh, what uh, implies volatility, Told me that maybe I can sell uh, zero DTE str strangles, or 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 maybe I can sell credit spreads because uh, this uh, percentile of thirty something was uh, quite uh, beneficial for that. So I did it um, in the short short term. So basically using zero DTEs, but that's what it tells me because you want to exp express an idea. And I was talking about that during our live streams and a lot of other stuff and basically uh you have an idea idea is not a trade that i can stress enough so your idea is now to buy qqq let's say it was a couple of days ago you want to buy qqq so now when you already have idea that you want to have qqq uh, to buy qqq you need to think what it means and how to do it you can open your brokerage account and literally buy qqq you can buy a call options. You can uh, buy spreads. You can sell puts. You can sell put spreads. Basically, if your view is that QQQ will not go lower, and there, it depends on multiple things, and depends how bullish you are. It depends how fast you think it will happen. So, yeah, but IV rank can help you because okay, if you decide, I will use options for that. You see IV percent percentile. You see IV because, for example, now I will show you. Uh, I will explain you how you can be sure that you will lose money. <laughs> how can you be sure? So on GME, for example, now you will see IV percentile is ninety eight percent. Now you can you can buy puts or calls, and stock can go up or down. Doesn't matter what you buy, but what matters is the stock will go to your direction. And you will lose money. I'll, I'll promise you that. If you buy options when IV percentile is 98%, you can be right on direction and you will lose money. That's it. Because uh, a lot of uh, people who are not that experienced in options, they start trading options. They say, hey, I bought a call option. Uh, next day, uh, stock uh, went up and my calls went down. Because guess what? IV crash happened. And, and, and that's it. Basically, so yeah, if you want to lose money, buy uh, buy options when IV percentile is very high, or IV rank in, in this case is very high. Uh, so like I said, you can use any metric. The fact that I use IV rank is not a reason for you to, to use it because I actually use IV rank, but I showed you the flaws IV rank has, so it's just preference. Uh, but yeah, if you want to lose, uh, buy options uh, when IV is high. Uh, but if you want to buy options, you can increase your probability of making money, especially if skew, uh, volatility smile, agrees with you. You can buy option spreads because then at least you will be selling some option with also high implied volatility. So. The option spreads, then this probability is even out. And yeah, but if you just want to buy a call or just want to buy a put, good luck with that. Because a lot of people uh, now think, oh, GME is now 30 bucks. If I buy a put, let's say to, to add the money or out of the money, put costs $10. Basically, that stock needs to go 50% down for you to be at it at break even, that's, it's impossible. But what can you do when IV rank is, or IV percentile is high? You can do a limit, uh, you can sell premium, selling volatility. I don't want to 
talk about that because you need to know what you're doing, but uh, you you can use uh, iron condors, which are limited risk, and you can sell it because if you sell iron condors and you limit your risk, instead of selling strangle, because selling strangle, you know, you can lose everything and end up in debt if you don't know what you're doing. But with limited risk strategies, when you see IV rank of 60, you can actually think about doing it. So uh, the question, of course, was what I was looking at. So I was looking at other things. IV rank it tells me whether something is worth trading or not. In a way, I want to trade. So QQQ, for example, I wanted to trade. So, so I chose uh, one option structure over the another because of IV rank, not because of uh, some candlesticks or charts or ranges or something. Ranges told me that I want to buy. Then, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking how I want to buy. Yeah. So. Okay, okay. That's very good, uh, Vai. Thanks very much. So <clears throat> I think we can wrap it up um, on the, this. It was aimed to be a quick video. I think you went uh, in depth in this. We encourage uh, people to either post a comment below if you have questions or to send us an email directly, uh, info at myfractorange.com, or you can uh, simply reach out uh, below the post on Twitter, either to Vi or to myself, and we always reply to any questions. So when you see the video, I encourage you to watch it again and again and again. I'm going to do that too, because I learned a lot from Vi. Uh, and uh, once you have uh, some precise questions, just shoot it, either comments uh, on YouTube, either comments on Twitter, or either just a, uh, an email. Okay. Yeah, and if uh, if someone is using IB API, you can literally type those lines. It's very easy. Long story short, IB percentile tells you how many days in last year implied volatility was lower than now, and IB rank tells you where current implied volatility sits in the range. That's all it is. I hope it was helpful. Thank you, Vai, to put it uh, in a simple way. That's very cool. OK, so we will do another video like this, probably about another topic. Uh, we'll try to do this kind of video more often. And uh, we will have another show next week on Tuesday, I guess, uh, Vai, with, uh, for the market talk. Yes. Probably yes, with, with Ted again. Yeah, so thanks, uh, everyone. I hope it was useful. And uh, yeah, as li like Raphael said, feel free to reach out. We are always uh, happy to, 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 to help and uh, make things more clear. Uh, of course, one thing we will not do is give a direct trading advice, but uh, everything else always, always. Okay. Thank you. See you. Bye.